Thomas Tuchel is a coach who had a lot of success at his previous clubs. Although he is no longer at the clubs, looking at his time at Mainz, PSG and Chelsea and the way he organized his teams helps us to understand the core of his philosophy, and how his training methods were translated into match day tactics. This video will discuss the main changes that he brought to the Chelsea side of Frank Lampard, tactics that we discussed in a previous video which you can click on here. Moreover we will be looking at the Bayern Munich team that he has recently taken over, and look at some of the differences that he may have when compared to Julian Nagelsmann. Tuchel seems to have a philosophy based around developing and making individual players better, a characteristic that explains perhaps why he was able to manage ego and to coach a team full of superstars, as he did during his time at PSG. This is also shown in his training sessions, where he has been reported to refrain from giving specific tactical instructions to his players. Instead, he designs training sessions and drills to simulate a situation that often occurs on a particular section of the pitch, and allow his players to be creative within these small-sided games. According to Tuchel, this is more effective since no training session will reflect any exact moment of a match. This way his players learn to be flexible and react to any problem that they are faced with during the games. We have seen Tuchel give an example about his team as he coached at Mainz. It is a common trend now for teams to defend compact and deep, and his players therefore had developed habits of playing out wide extremely early during the build-up by playing a horizontal pass, from the centre-back to full-back and then a vertical pass to the wide midfielder. This is problematic, because players positioned out wide can be easily trapped using the side line. Tuchel's solution here was not to intervene during the training session to explain that he didn't want to see this in his team. Instead, he simply cut the pitch diagonally into a diamond shape, so that players were forced to play through the center. This is just one of the many ways that explains Tuchel's style of coaching. A style in which he, rather than giving instructions, changes the framework so that the players intuitively need to adapt. Within these frameworks he gives players complete freedom to find the solutions that best suit the individual and or groups involved in play. We have also seen these aspects after looking at Tuchel's matches, and they are particularly evident when looking at the differences between Lampard and Tuchel's Chelsea teams. The most noticeable of the changes that he brought to the side is of course the 3 or 5 at the back system that Tuchel had reverted to in comparison to the 4-3-3 or 4-2-3-1 hybrid that Lampard seemed to prefer. Lampard liked to play with offensive fullbacks, and often with two offensive fullbacks regardless of which side the ball was on and for this reason would often leave his formation with a double pivot for the added security, rather than sending one of his center defensive midfielders forward. Problems in the build-up often occur in this situation where midfielders block passing options to their own attacking teammates. Moreover the fullback in this situation is too far away to provide a proper passing option. This isolates the centre-back on the ball and can cause problems during the build-up, especially if the opposition defend intelligently using a 4-4-2 or 4-4-1-1 shape using the cover shadow. Long balls were often also not an option because Werner would play up front as the lone striker instead of players such as Abraham or Giroud. As we know, Timo Werner is a smaller player who prefers to use spaces in between the lines or make runs behind the opposition defense, which were the exact passing options that were often blocked by his own teammates in the previous season. Tuchel's three at the back system on the other hand seems to be a shape that allows for more passing options. The first important difference is that the three-man build-up with wide centre-backs allows for better passing angles. Although the double pivot is the same, the midfielders do not get in the way of passes to the attacking players, while still providing a passing option in behind the first line of opposition defense. The wingbacks in this formation are also naturally positioned higher up despite being closer to the centre-backs. They can therefore participate further in attacking actions without disrupting the basic team shape, and can from here participate in further rotations to disrupt opposition team shape. Moreover, a closer look at the positioning of the players in a 3-4-3 formation, resembles the diamond shape that Tuchel discussed when talking about his training sessions. This does not mean that Tuchel does not attack through the flanks.
An example was Marcos Alonso on the left-hand side, who under Lampard was getting less play time due to off-the-pitch issues. Alonso's attacking nature allowed him to combine well with wingers such as Werner who liked to play in the spaces in between the lines, almost as a number 10. This provided one possible solution for the earlier problem of having no target man when playing long balls. Tuchel's right-hand side was also unique. His 3-4-3 also played with offensive wingbacks, often with both of them forward at the same time. However the difference here was the positioning of players, where the 3-4-3 naturally creates an even distribution of players. This is namely the 5-5 distribution of positional play. For anyone who is interested in a more detailed explanation, we have a previous video on this philosophy. The right centre-back as Piliqueta is a versatile defender who is also comfortable playing full-back and, or wing-back positions at Chelsea. Tuchel used this to his advantage by pushing the right wing-back forward, often Hudson Odoi or Rhys James to push as high and wide as possible, to also allow as Piliqueta to situationally join attacks. From these positions as Piliqueta was able to combine with midfield and offensive players, but also at times overlap as he used to do as a fullback. The centre-back overlap is a tactic that we will probably see more teams implement since many teams are playing three or five at the back systems as a reaction to defending against positional plays five lane attack. This is why the three centre-backs of Tuchel's teams were effective, because both as Piliqueta and also other centre-backs such as Rudiger, seem to be constantly challenging the opposition by taking the ball into the spaces in front of them to draw out opposition players. This is where we have seen signs of Tuchel's training sessions such as small-sided games, through the way the centre-back can start the attack and disrupt opposition team shape, in order to then play close combinations and unleash player creativity further up the pitch. Tuchel has recently taken over Julian Nagelsmann's Bayern Munich team. It is difficult to say if Tuchel is a better coach than Nagelsmann, who is also a top manager. However it seems that the club were not happy with the inconsistent performances despite being top of the Bundesliga, winning only three of the last five matches while he was manager at Bayern. We saw for example against the last game versus Bayer Leverkusen some of the reasons why his side was not functioning as well as it could have. Nagelsmann defended very narrow against Leverkusen's 4-3-3 in this game and attempted to push his wingbacks forward, when defending on the wings. One problem that they had was when one of the inside forwards decided to drop deeper into the half spaces for example on Munich's left-hand side. De Ligt being a natural centre-back was often hesitant to follow his man, and this often left Davies unable to decide which Leverkusen player he should press. This led in this game, to Munich having very little control over the game and their pressing became very passive. On the 1st of April 2023 Tuchel played his first game with the Bayern side against Dortmund in which he won 4-2. It is difficult to say if his ideas have already been transferred into the team since it has not been long since Tuchel took over. However there were some noticeable aspects of the game. In particular the intention of playing through the centre, despite playing their usual 4-2-3-1 formation. Despite playing in a 4-2-3-1 formation, we saw some of this as both fullbacks Davies and Pavard did not take up completely wide positions when in possession of the ball. This made the distances required to pass the ball much shorter particularly when playing the line-breaking passes which got Goretzka and Muller on the ball often. What often happened was that Dortmund, in an attempt to block passing lanes into the centre would have their wingers position themselves extremely narrow, which opened up passing lanes to the wingers again. In this way we also saw that Tuchel's team could play flexible and had different solutions depending on how the opposition defended. We even saw Pavard situationally take up the inverted fullback role, as he instructed Upamecano to play the ball directly out wide to Sani when he saw that he was tightly marked. Although they were not always executed perfectly, the movement towards the centre could be seen leading up to the goals. 
Upamecano played the ball through the center relatively early during the build-up for the first goal, catching Dortmund players off guard who thought the ball would be played out wide to Pavard. Of course the goal would not have taken place if not for an individual mistake from the goalkeeper, however mistakes are also part of the game. Sani playing in the right wing position is also an indication of Tuchel's style. By playing on the right hand side rather than the left, Sani will almost always prefer to cut inside onto his left foot, which we saw both in the build up to the third and fourth goals. We already know that Tuchel is a great coach and are excited to see how he and the new Bayern Munich side grow together. Do you think that Tuchel will revert to the 3-4-3 formation or stay with the 4-2-3-1 that the Bayern players seem to play so well?